What is up my fellow writing addicts? I'm Marissa and today we're going to talk about actually one of my favorite things, developmental editing. And I'm not kidding, it is my favorite type of editing and I'm actually really excited because this kicks off the editing series because we are going to talk about each type of editing in the order that you should basically do them to your manuscript. So look out for those videos. I'm not sure exactly when they'll come out, but it will hopefully be soon enough. So a few of you might be wondering, or maybe even a lot of you, might be wondering what developmental editing is. It does go by another name, it's called content editing, but you typically find that term in more nonfiction. When you get into fiction though, it is developmental editing. And it is when you improve the content and the structure of your manuscript. So what you're mainly looking for when you're doing this type of edit is you're looking for pacing, characterization, setting, plot, and theme. Do not even look at grammar, syntax, wording. That is for later. This is dealing with the main bulk of the story, the characters, the world building, the rules, basically the meat of the story. You can work out later to trim it down or um, make your wording perfect or put that comma in the right place. That is for later. Just, just work on the story itself. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave you out to dry. I have some wonderful tips on how to help you get through your demental edit. First things first, it actually starts when we are writing our rough draft. And this is a tip that I have learned and I tell everybody, when you're writing your rough draft, you always have this like, oh fuck moment, where you're like, oh, I kind of want like this to happen there, or like this needs to be changed. Don't change it. Just keep writing. Just pick a part and be like, okay, this is where I want it to start now. Keep a separate document open and make a list of changes. Like, I want to make this character be more this or that, or maybe I want this event to happen earlier. Because if you keep making changes to your rough draft, I guarantee you won't finish. Trust me, I have done it where like in the middle of my book, I realized it spiraled out a different direction than it was supposed to. And I had to basically go back to my original outline and kind of pick where I wanted it to start and just start there. My characters teleported and I had to guess on what kind of character development they'd had it so far or their chemistry. I just had to work with it, but when I came back, I was able to smooth it out. So definitely keep open a document of like changes you want to keep or like, hey, make sure to research the bath or the plumbing system in, you know, middle, t in middle times or something. I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean? Just pick any era, that kind of stuff. Just don't go into it. Just put it there. Once you're done, you know, writing it and making your list and whatever, take your manuscript and stick it on a shelf, either physically or metaphorically, do it. Don't touch it. It's going to be really tempting just to dive on in and fix all those issues, but trust me, don't. The best thing you can do is stick it on a week, on a shelf for like two weeks to a month. Basically what you're trying to do is give yourself distance from the work. That way when you come in, you see it with essentially fresh eyes. You've kind of forgotten it a little bit. You don't remember every little detail. And when you read through it, you can make more notes. Like, oh yeah, it'd be so amazing if I put this, or you know, I had that thought, maybe it should go here. You can make notes in the manuscript on that, if it's like smaller, for bigger general stuff, put it back on that document, and you'll be just amazing. So as you read through it, either that initial read through or the read through afterwards, you know, don't be afraid to do multiple reads. Definitely mark where you find yourself skimming, you're confused, the logic doesn't add up, or the scene is just maybe to you a bit flat. Depends, be careful with that last one, but you know, I see a lot of things where I'm like, wow, I don't know what crack I was smoking that day, but whoo, we gotta fix you. <laughs> and, and you know, try to see where you can fix those areas for your first initial edit. It also helps if you mark kind of where your characters need to be emotionally, physically. Like if they have a stab wound in one chapter and they don't in the other, that's kind of important. Make sure that carries through. If there's a death, they should be, you know, as worried about it when it happens as, you know, chapters later. Little things like that. It's good to keep tabs on kind of when characters should be feeling or doing certain things at those times. Just kind of check in with them because that consistency will help a lot later. Just even if you just keep a list, it's going to help you out in the long run. As I said earlier, but I do want to reiterate it, don't focus on spelling and grammar. And the reason I'm bringing this back up again is because I know what happens. You read it and you're like, oh, I totally forgot to put a period here or that needs to be capitalized or this is misspelled. Can I just fix it now? If it's something small and quick and you're not really searching for the mistakes, yes, it's fine. Sometimes 
you just run into them and you're like, wow, I can't spell abacus because that's a hard fucking word. I can't. Thank God for Google. And you're just like, okay, click, cool. Now it's spelled right, I can move on. Or you need to essentially put the grammar into a sentence because you're like, what the fuck am I talking about? I've seen that happen too. So it just essentially don't like search for spelling or grammar mistakes. Just kind of go with the flow, do what's necessary. If you can ignore it, ignore it, essentially. And unfortunately, my next tip is that you have to accept <laughs> that scenes, chapters, multiple chapters, sometimes even a whole character might have to be deleted. And I've actually advised a person back when I did do beta reading that an entire character be cut because that character added nothing, absolutely nothing to this plot. I found him completely useless. I thought he was useless at the beginning and I thought it was useless at the end. And I unfortunately had to break it to him that this character either needs to be reworked or cut. And that actually goes right next into the next thing that sometimes an entire plot line or an element or a theme or a character has to be rewritten because they're not working. If they stick out in a super bad way, if they're just a sore thumb, people aren't gonna give it a pass. You have to fix it and rework it so it flows beautifully. You're essentially weaving a tapestry. You can't have a thread doing its own thing. You have to make it work. Now for these deleted bits, never actually delete them. I know some of you might be confused. What I do is I have either a, a document or a folder called scraps, depending on how much I have or how specific I wanna be, depending on how detailed I am of cutting things. Because a lot of times I will cut an entire chapter or scene or whatever have you, and then I'm like writing, I'm like, oh my God, what was that one conversation or that one bit of action that I cut? It'd be perfect here, I just have to rewrite it and you can go and grab it, it's less writing, you know, work smarter, not harder. And also it kind of just gives you something to work with. It's always easier to edit something than an empty page. You know, don't reinvent the wheel, just it's always good to save those scraps. They might work as inspiration or again, something to rework later. The next tip is super important. Edit in layers. Because if you take on too many things, if you're looking for a, li a you know a list of 10 things in a book, you're gonna forget most of them. I suggest at most take on three. And that is at most, like you've done this for a while. I know going through it for one thing, if it's a really big thing, just the once. I know it's annoying, I know it's tedious, but you're going to mess up if you don't. You have to take the time and it's a lot of time. So don't be afraid to take breaks, especially in between the reads. So you're not just skimming because you've read it for 50 billion times. I know that feeling. Just you have to go through and, you know, edit for the characters, edit for the scenery, edit for, you know, whatever. And actually this goes my next tip too. This happens a lot today. Um, use highlighters or post-its to mark like little things like when a character's appearance is described, you know, too little, too less. You want to have it just right when maybe there's a curse word. Maybe you want to cut down your curse words, um, but you don't want to have to go like searching through all the ones you might have used because if they get cut off, then they won't get, you know, caught. And just flag anything you might want to do, uh, whatever it be, like this is where like the breaks are going to be or when you italicized or bolded something, whatever. Those tools are going to be really helpful for when you're skimming through and those things will catch your eye and you can kind of bookmark them to fix or work with later. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching my video on, on developmental editing or content editing, whichever side you are on for fiction or nonfiction, always glad to have you. And down in the comments below, why don't you see if you can guess which type of editing I'm talking about next time? Well, you know, whenever I do this series. I'm so curious, I'm like really curious to see who can get it right. It's gonna be the next in line after developmental editing. That's the only hint you'll get. And of course, you can also tell me on Twitter at writing underscore addicts or send me your guests on Facebook at facebook.com slash writing addicts. And please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when videos come out and please like this video. It really means a lot. And I'll see you next time. Bye.